message tonight, thank God. But I, I can add to it. You know why? Because there's more of it. Y'all read with me tonight First John's Gospel. Amen. I'm not going to get here to this a little bit, but I'd just like to, I'd like to share something with you tonight. If you listen to the words, you'll get a little bit of what Jeremy said this morning. you get a little bit of what Brother Johnny said tonight. And everything goes together. Yeah. God, that's how God works. Mm -hmm. But you got to listen. Yeah. As Brother Jeremy said this morning, you got to listen to what the Spirit says thing to the church. you gotta, you got to pay attention to what's going on. Yeah. If you don't pay attention, you'll not get anything out of it. Right. But in 1 John tonight, and I'm going to start reading the first chapter, the fifth verse. Everybody with me? we got a King James Bible. We don't use nothing else. I don't know Greek, and I don't know Hebrew, and right. I don't know Japanese. Right. All I know is English. Yes. That's what I was taught, and that's good enough for me. Amen. I don't need anything, any other yeah. language. Right. I'm not going to get, I don't need no uh, uh, diverse kinds of tongues. Yeah. I don't need to speak no other languages, because there ain't nobody here but, but English-speaking yeah. people, right. thank God. Yeah. And if I, somebody was here, I know God can give us a language yeah. to talk to. How many believe that? Amen. On the day of Pentecost, there's a bunch of different people there, Amen. and the Holy Ghost spoke to every one of them. Right. And God told me, you to know what the Spirit says to the church. But it says here, This then is the message which ye have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, yes. and in him is no darkness at all. Amen. That's, that's the bottom line. Yes. God's light, and in him there is no darkness. Amen. If people's in darkness, they're in trouble tonight. Yes. And sometimes we get in shady places sometimes. Yes. You know, when you get in a shady place, you're not you're not in the light. Thank God. But you gotta. That's like me today. I, I was sitting at the desk and, and I had a something I was trying to read and I couldn't read it by the computer and I couldn't read it by the light. I had to get turn the lamp on and get over and hold it underneath the lamp where I could see what it says. And sometimes we need to turn the light on yeah. while we're doing so we'll know what it says. Right. And it goes on here and said, if we say that we have fellowship with Him. And walk in darkness, yes. we lie and do not the truth. Now, I'm not, I'm not, it's not what Brother Jenkins says tonight. No. That's what the scripture says. Right. If we say that we got fellowship with God and we walk in darkness, we're, we're lying because he can't walk in darkness. Amen. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. The Bible said without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. And I think about this, when we when we repent and we come to God and the blood's applied and we repent of our sins and God and we, God forgets us of those yeah. sins. We need to forget about those sins. Don't talk about them sins. Don't let nobody bring them up on you. Know, once they've been went under the blood, that's where they belong, thank God. And but the old devil, he'll keep trying to bring them things back to your mind, bring things to you. Other people try to bring your past back, but you can't let that be on you. God said that he's going to cleanse us tonight. Listen. And he said, and if you walk in the light, there's a, there's a if you do, if you walk in the light, as he is the light, we have fellowship one with another, and that's not battleship, that's fellowship. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleansed us from all sin. Now listen. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Yes. You know, we all make mistakes. Sure, right. Do you know all unrighteousness is sin? Uh -huh. The Bible said, He that knoweth to do good doeth it not to him it's sin. Yes. Do you know that we err sometimes yes. in our lives and it's sin? Yeah. Amen. There's things in our flesh that's not clean. Right. It's unclean. That's why it's in cleansing ourselves of all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit. Thank God. we got to continually clean ourselves and be washed, thank God. Yeah. But when we first get in and we get baptized, amen, every time we make a mistake, we don't have to run to the creek sure. and do it all again. Yeah. Amen. That blood, it covers us. Yeah. And as we're working and walking with God, every time that we do something wrong, God will chasten us. He'll shake us. He'll whip us. Thank God. He'll thank God that we're like the children to Him. But the thing about it is, if we get in the place where we don't need no help from God and we're doing it all around, He said we're lying. He said if we 
if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. Yeah. And the truth is not in us. Listen, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins yeah. and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If God, if you do something wrong, confess it before yeah. God. Don't try to hide it. Amen. Don't try to stay home. I know a lot of times people, they get down, they, they do something wrong, they'll stay home from church. Or they won't pray. Or they won't read. But the thing about this, we got to do Amen. what we got to do. Keep going on doing yeah. what's right. If I get in an automobile access, when I was a young man, I remember I was going out in Newcastle here, and I wasn't paying no attention. I run my car off the road and hit a big tree out there, and I tore my car up. And you know, my guys were really worried my dad was going to be upset, which he was just glad it was okay. But he said it was important that I get right back in the driver's seat, and I start driving again, because he didn't want that fear out there of me running into something or wrecking that disturbed me from being able to go on with my life. And that's what sometimes we have made mistakes and we do things that's not right. But God uh, don't, don't, He's not going to cut us off. He's not sitting up there with a club waiting for you to make a mistake just so He can hit you over the head. But God loves you and He died for you. He wants you to overcome that sin, that thing that's would cause us to be upset. Thank God there's little things. Thank God the little thoughts that destroys the vines. I made mistakes and I just hated myself. Thank God in a manner of speaking because I said this or I said that and I've said something that seems to come out of my mouth. Brother Randy, I knew I shouldn't have said that and a lot of times I've turned around and I've grabbed people and got to the arm and tell them I, I didn't mean that. Thank God I, I hope you didn't take that the wrong way because I wouldn't want to hurt him. Anybody, but I'll tell you what, we make mistakes, but uh, if we confess our faults before God, God will forgive us. Uh, that line that was applied to me a lot of years ago, it's still good. It's still washing me. It's still cleaning me. It's still making me whole. Uh, and when I make mistakes, it's still there, thank God. Listen now. And if we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and the word and his word is not in us. When you hear God's word, it will convict you. Yeah. Amen. Now, I know people say, now you're saying, now you're saying it's all right to sin. No, that ain't what I'm saying. But let's go on. Let's read this a little bit farther. Let's read down here in the second verse. My little children. He's not talking to ones that's aged and, and full about milk brother, but he's talking to people that's young. People thank God it's not God's will that any of us sin. Amen. But if we do, God will forgive us for it if it's a mistake. Thank God that's what we preach here. Listen, he said, My little children, these things I write unto you that you want everybody, that you want sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father. What's his name? Jesus, Jesus Christ the righteous. Now, I wrote this advocate down here, one who defends or maintains or keeps us on the course. Did you ever think we got an unction from the holy one? Yeah. And when I start getting out of the way, he just puts me right back over in place. Yeah. I start getting over this way, he'll put me back in this place. Yeah. That's what the Holy Ghost is for. Yeah. It's to lead you and guide you. It's to help you tonight. It's your comforter. Yeah. We need that comforter, children, to show us the way because we don't know the way. That's why the disciples had Jesus said, how would they know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said, no man have a to the Father but by me. Yeah. We don't know the way, but He knows the way. Right. And if we get the Holy Ghost, He'll lead us and guide us in the way. He said, there's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, yeah. and Father who's above all, through all, and in you all, there's only one way tonight. Right. Just one way. Right. One way. Well, that's what He said. We have an advocate with the Father. If we see Him, my little children, I would that you sin not. But if we do, you know, I was at one time when we was under the law, we didn't have the blood. And if we sinned, we, they took us out and stoned us. Yeah. If you made a mistake, you've done something wrong, you can get raped and conciliation for it. They take you out and kill you for it. But now we're living under grace. 
And that don't mean grace, don't mean that you can sin, but if we're under God's favor. And one place it's called the sure mercies of David. How that God told my David that he would never forsake him, thank God. And he would always be there. And if he made a mistake, it's in 2 Samuel 7 chapter, I believe. And he said, told him, he said, thank God, if you if you make a mistake, or if you get out of the way, he said, I'm going to chasten you. I'm going to bring you back into the way. I was glad for God's chastening tonight. I'm glad that I don't have to stay up with everybody else and be what everybody else wants me to be. I'm standing before God tonight. He's not judged tonight. We have a notion from the Holy One tonight. That's the Holy Ghost. That's like the brother was preaching this morning. We need to listen to the Spirit of God and let God lead us. Let Him show us the way. Amen. It's just like He said this morning. He said, let the Spirit say what the Spirit says to the church. Listen for what God said. Listen for God to speak to you. Be still and know that I'm God, He said. My little children, I would that you sin not. But if any man have a sin, see, if any man sin, we have an advocate. We got a defender. We got a mediator. Amen. I mean, believe Jesus Christ is our mediator. Amen. Amen. He's our advocate. Amen. It goes on and it says, and he is our is the perpetuation. Uh, the, the thing about it is, perpetuation is an act of gaining or regaining favor. In other words, God will bring us back. Amen. Once we repent of our sins and we come to the Lord and we've done all we can do, God is there to help us. Yeah. That's what God's there for. He's there to help us. Thank God he said, Lo, I stand at the door and knock. He's, anybody will hear my voice. <laughs> Amen. He ain't just talking to sinner people. He's talking to all of us. <laughs> if we get in the doorway, we don't know what to do. Wait on God. God loves you tonight. He laid down his life for you. Thank right. God. He came down here and walked in the flesh and overcome the flesh. <laughs> that he would be able to forgive us and nurture us and help us along the way. God is a wonderful, merciful God. Tonight. And it's not His will that anybody perish. Amen. He's not, he's not just waiting for you to make a mistake so He can put you out. Amen. If you're trying and you're seeking God, and you know what? I don't expect you to seek God like I do. Amen. I know a lot of times I, I thought, well, you got to do it my way, but I found out God's got a way. And you know, God knows how to work when I don't know how to work. He, God knows how to speak to every one of us. Amen. You know when God's speaking to you. Amen. It's, it's right when you know when God's speaking to you, don't you? Amen. What well, anybody else here do not? But you know what He's speaking to you. You know what He said? And He can't lie. He said, my my sheep know my voice, and a stranger will not follow. How many knows his voice tonight? How many knows when he's speaking to you tonight? Amen. I know when he's speaking to me. Amen. I, I'm not like saying, God, I'll have to say, Lord, who are you? Hey, God, one time I did. I didn't know who he was. That's why Samuel, he's a little boy. And when God spoke to him, he didn't know who he was. He thought it was old Eli that was calling him. But it wasn't Eli. It was God speaking to him. It was saying, it said, say, Lord, speak. Amen. Speak now. Amen. When Samuel answered the Lord, the Lord from that year, he made a great prophet out of Samuel. Yeah. He brought him down. He used him to anoint King Saul. He used him to anoint David. Hallelujah. What I'm trying to say is God made a great work out of him because he could hear the voice of God. And I'll tell you what, he suffered a lot in his yeah. lifetime. Samuel did. It was a hard job he had. And even his children did my right. And his sons was a child to him because they wouldn't do right. Amen. That's why people ask for a king because his sons was wicked and the people saw well when his sons grow up. Them's the ones that's going to be under us and it's going to be just like it was with Eli again. But the thing about this, they was different, thank God. I'll tell you what, God's different tonight. Yeah. We've got to go with God Amen. one step at a time. Yeah. The, the Lord, if you haven't got the Holy Ghost yet, just keep seeking him. <laughs> he wants you to have it. He promised it to you as a gift tonight. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost, he said, the, the promises to you and to your children. 
God, that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God will call. But we're trying to compare ourselves to one another. We're trying to compare ourselves to the one sitting across the aisle, or comparing yourself to the to the bishop. You've got to compare yourself between you and God when you come before God and you make up your mind. Now, don't get me wrong. If we preach it out of here and it's out of the book, we got to walk in it. But God wants us to try to understand it. Everybody don't understand it just because we preach it. And people say, well, I've told them a dozen times uh, and they still won't do it. Well, maybe it's going to take somebody else to tell them to get into them so where they're going to understand it. Maybe I can never reach somebody, Brother Randy, and maybe you can reach them. Uh, that's why God, God made us all different. And God said each one of us can do the part that He's got for us. The Bible said there's many members in the body tonight. Ain't you glad you're one of them members? Maybe you ain't going to be uh, using somewhere else. If you're a leg, you ain't going to be able to use for an arm. If I took my leg and put it up here on my arm, and really, I wouldn't be able to use it. Right. Or if I put my arm down where my leg's at, I can use it. And the thing about it is, God's going to put it in the body where it pleases right. Him. Yeah. Yes. God loves everyone here. Mm -hmm. God's called everyone here. You wouldn't be here tonight right. if God didn't call you. And I know, so I know sometimes that you get discouraged. I know that you get down. Yeah. But the thing about it is, he said right here, we got an advocate. Yeah. We got a perpetuation. We got somebody there. If we'll let him, he'll show us the yeah. way. Yeah. If we'll just listen to him, we got to keep his commandments and we got to be obedient to him. And sometimes his commandments seem grievous to it because we're living in the flesh. But this old flesh is going to die yeah. and we need the Holy Ghost to lead us and guide us. He is our perpetuation for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Yeah. He died for all the sins. Right. He said, by his stripes, we were healed. And I know that's a scripture that's used so much. Yeah. People think just because God died, everybody's going to get healed. Everybody's, but you know what? God, if he, if he comes into our life, the healing begins. That's, right. That's why I said we got to be born again. Mm -hmm. There's a healing process. Yep. Amen. And we start, God starts working on us when we come. Now I'm going to read a little farther. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a what? Liar. And the truth Amen. is not in him. That's, that's what God said. Yeah. And he said, and whoso keepeth his word, in him, listen, talking about the ones that keep his word, keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God what? Perfected. Perfected. Hereby know that we are in him. That's how we know we're in him. Yes. The things of God, they begin to be perfected. How many feels a change? Yes. How many feels a change? Yes. Amen. How many's ever had a sun burn before? Mm -hmm. Did you feel a change? Did you come in the house and go like this? Amen. You got to get something to put on that. Amen. You need some balm of Gilead. When you've been out in the fire too long, you got to have some balm of Gilead to put on there. You rub it on there. Oh, Hezekiah, Isaiah, they had the balm of Gilead. They rub it right on there. That's what we need right there. We need to rub it on us and be baptized in it and obey it, glory to God, and it'll heal us. He that saith he abideth in him, listen now. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked. Amen. So if he walked it, we need to walk it. Right. Brethren, I write no new commandment to you, but an old commandment which you have heard from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you have heard from the beginning. Amen. Remember what he said in the beginning? In the beginning was the word. The Word was with God. The Word of God was God. The same was in the beginning with God. God, it's from the beginning. God's way is He's got a plan. I'm not going to read more. I can read the whole chapter. But I just want to give you something to think about. Don't be so discouraged when you make a mistake. Don't give up. Don't quit. Where are you going to go to? The devil gets you running, you know, when you get down and you get the, and y'all get all down and you want to run. I found out a long time ago I had nowhere to run to. I can't go nowhere. I can stay home. 
again. I cover my head up and I can hide for a while, but after a little bit, Brother Randy, I gotta get out of there. Because the light that's inside of me, it's wanting to shine. Yeah. Amen. You can't hide it. He said, Brother Johnny said, it's like city said on the hill. You can't hide it. If it's in you, and the prophet, one time, he, Jeremiah, he was so aggravated with the people, he said, I ain't going to preach no more. I'm not going to, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to do nothing no more. I'm going to quit. And after a while, he said, it was like fire shut up inside of me. After a while, you've got to let it out. I tell you what, when conviction comes inside of you, and it be, you begin to work, and God begins to work on you, and then you're going to live or die. Amen. Amen. When I went out, I was so miserable. I was two people. Yeah, yeah. That sinner man, that sinful man had a hold of me. And it was killing me. Yeah. And I had enough of knowledge of God inside of me to know that I was dying. Yeah. I know that it was killing me. And at the worst of all, I had a conscience about it. And I knew that if it killed me, I was going to go to hell. Yeah. I was going to burn in the lake of fire forever. But you know what? After a while, Brother Randy, thank God, I escape from that old man. I need to put him off. I, I need to be born again. I need to be changed. And God has never forsaken me Amen. in 30 some years since I've been living for him. A lot of people said he'll never make it. He'll, he'll never mount to nothing. Well, I never did make it. God has helped me all the way. I can take no credit for nothing. If I've done anything, it's been through him. And tonight, that's what you need to say. He said, I'm, I'm, he that's inside of me is greater yeah, yeah. than he that's in the world. Right. How many say that? Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. You know who's in the world? This old fleshly thing. This is what's in the world. Hey man, I know everybody says that's the devil. And I'm going to tell you what, this old fleshly thing, if you read the seventh chapter of Romans, it'll tell you about this old, this old cursed thing. Thank God, who's going to deliver me from this body of death? That's what Paul said. Mm -hmm. Amen. When he really saw the light, he said, who's going to deliver me from this old body that I'm living in? Thank God. And I know this sometimes, like I said, we make mistakes and we err. But when we err, you got to ask God to forgive us. Yes. Amen. The thing about this, don't go sit at home. Come in here and get up here to the altar. And if you're so down that you can't get up and pray for somebody else, come up here and pray for yourself. Amen. 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 I tell you what, that's really, that's really the truth. And really, you stop and think about it. I tell you myself, the, God, the Word of God says this. He said, if we lay our hands on the sick, they shall recover. How many believe that tonight? Amen. Do you think we need to practice what we preach? Yeah. Amen. You know what? If we don't practice it, God won't let it happen. Right. If we don't lay hands on people, and I'll tell you what, if I'm in such a state that I can't lay my hands on people and pray with them, then I need to get somewhere and pray myself until I am able to get them pray with them. Amen. Amen. Sometimes I don't need to be praying for nobody. Sometimes I could just get in the way. I get down there and just shake people and shake them and everything. They ain't even getting the whole cup. No, no, no. no, sir. I know down through the years I've seen a lot of things. Yeah. I know the old the old people years ago, they put a wool on her head and uh, they had to let it run down the back of your neck, down over your face. They'd, take their finger, put it over the bottle, and put it over your head, and they didn't do it out of a bad mind or nothing. That's just the way they did it. And when that oil got on there, it would run down behind your ears sometimes. But you know what? I shouldn't complain about that. When they put it on there, it run off his beard. It run off his clothes. Amen. Would we be willing to do that tonight? If it meant a healing, and we did the oil would just run off from you? I'd tell you what, it's something to think about. I, but, but you know what? God's got a way of doing it. Sometimes I need to pray myself or I pray with other people. That's like this if I look around and I see everybody at the altar praying, that don't bother me a bit. No. I figure they're up here washing their hands. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen. Sherry, she's taught me down through the years. I've never washed my hands unless I've got the fur. I get her sometimes I tell her she's a Pharisee. She's always made me wash, her, wash my hands. Mm -hmm. But you know what? That's why we all have to sanctify ourselves. And cleanse ourselves before we lay hands on other people, before we enter into other people's matters. 
Amen. You know, God wants us to be patient. Yes. You know, there's a scripture that talks about he that leadeth into captivity will go into captivity. Yes. Sometimes you can sit and tell other people your problems and what you're doing is you're taking them into captivity. Right. Right. Y'all love it? Mm -hmm. Amen, amen, amen. 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 Me and Brother John ain't skipping you double hair tonight. I didn't keep you too long. Amen. God's good. Amen. That's all saying tonight.